Hello, let's talk about refracting telescope. Um, as you can see, uh, the basic of refracting telescope consists of two convex lens. And I want you to read the test book uh, first. So C2.3 for refracting telescope. Uh, try to find out the key points and then get back to us. You may want to pause the video first and then continue. Okay, so um, a few things that you may want to pay attention is a uh, very common sense that telescope is to look at uh, stars. So things, uh, the object that you are looking at must be from infinity. Uh, and that's why you can see the, the diagram here is from infinity. Uh, in that case, we cannot actually uh, be able to comment on the linear magnification directly so uh, we will be talking about angular magnification, which is a very simple formula, which we'll be talking about soon. But first of all, uh, you would you should notice that the image would be virtual as you look at this diagram will be virtual, and it will be inverted. And that's why uh, for those who have experience using a telescope, uh, for example, for those who went to the cam, uh, you know that it's inverted, so it's a bit hard to adjust and uh, manipulate at the first place before you get familiar with this. And of course, uh, it will magnify it at the end. Uh, I mean, that's why you use a scope, right? Rather than looking, it, uh, looking at it with your original eye. And the final image will form at infinity. Okay, so this is the ideal situation, uh, which we also call this normal adjustment. Okay, so uh, be careful with the word normal adjustment here. And that means that uh, if you recall the word from the previous video, normal adjustment when you're talking about microscope uh, is referring when the image is forming at the near point, which is 25 cm. For telescope, then it, scope, it will be forming at infinity, uh, or we call it a far point. Okay, so this is uh, the so-called normal adjustment for these two optical instruments. For the diagram, uh, telescope is actually much more intuitive and much easier. And you just have to recall that uh, since the object is coming from infinity, and getting through this convex lens, uh, if you recall what you learned in year 10 or just simply re re revised this year, you know that the image will form at the focal length, FO, focal length, uh, first, for the first, I first image. The final image, since uh, we, try to we try to project the image as we call the normal adjustment, uh, we want to project it to infinity, then you must want to put the second lens, that means the eyepiece, uh, so that this first image is right at its own F also. Okay, so then uh, this is a property of convex lens. Things coming from infinity go to F, or things at F go to infinity. That's what we learned in year 10. So that's why you will find out the distance between the two lenses to obtain the image at infinity uh, the distance between them must simply be the focal length at together. Okay, so this is a relationship that uh, you would need to use. And again, I really want to remind you again, the assumption of getting this two focal length at together uh, equal to the separation of the two lengths is only true because there's an assumption behind uh, is when you form it at infinity. Okay, so that means if you are not forming at forming it at infinity, uh, this should not hold. Okay, uh, same for the angular magnification. Uh, when you are adjusting at the normal adjustment, then uh, according to the basic definition for the angular magnification here. I think the the right like the, the word is wrong. I mean it should be from the usual way we write is actually uh, theta prime theta prime over theta instead of 
like both are the same. Anyway, so uh, that will make, I think this one is quite self-explanatory for now, cause you know this is the angle and this is the angle, right? You can work out by uh, tangent theta using the small angle approximation. So the, uh, the equation is actually quite simple, it's just FO over FE. That is an equation you can find from the data booklet. Okay, so basically that's it, all right, for the refracting telescope. Let's try to work on some example. Pause the video now, try it out, and continue the video. Okay, so what you have here is, uh, like I said, there are t basically two usual equation that you will use. Uh, the one is mentioned from by the textbook and also your data booklet. Uh, that is the angular magnification mentioned by the question. So I put down big M here and that is 70. At the, at the same time, uh, the, uh, the question also says two lenses are 60 cm apart from uh, each other. And that means uh, FO plus FE, as we understand uh, the diagram it will equal to 60 and when you solve this by algebra you should find the answer uh, for this two. Let's try the next video, I mean next question. Okay so here is the answer uh, from the question uh, you'll find that 20 meter is the UO as I always said you should put down the um, variable symbol next to the number um, and 30 cm is the VE is the final image distance and they tell you FO and also FE focal length of both lenses and they want you to find linear magnification okay so we we don't actually have a equation mentioned just now but then of course you can work it out at the end. So uh, one really special thing I would like to remind you here to emphasize is here, 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 okay, is that uh, this question putting you in a situation where it's quite stupid that you use a telescope but you are just looking at, at an object that is 20 meter away from you only. What I mean is telescope as we said we use it to observe things from infinity under normal adjustment. So that means we cannot assume the, uh, the equation that we learned just now uh, could be used directly. You should be more like skeptical about that. Okay, so what you should be doing instead is, um, what I, I need to do is I would want to find uh, the magnification, linear magnification, so this is my first step. I will do MO times ME because that's how you define magnification, magnification of each of them basically, and you multiply them together. And by definition, that is, uh, you can see here, a V over U negative in general for each of them. But then of course you find out you got UO, you got this one, you got VE, Oh, sorry, not, not VO. Okay, you got UO and VE. That means you're missing out these two. So like how we did in the previous video for microscope, you would then stop here, but then try, try to do the blue pen this part first by using finance formula, finding out VO and finding out uh, UE. That means the other two remain unknown variable. Uh, and you should be able to find them by use again finance formula. Notice that UE is negative and that is actually fine because uh, you may have virtual object. That means the first lens projected too far that is beyond the lens and then this become a virtual object. We, we talk about it uh, in the first chapter in option C. And that's okay when you substitute to it just to remember you still have the negative here again because of its uh, virtual object nature. At the end, you calculate, you know, just substitute, calculate, and then you can find the answer. And of course, if you try to think about this question again, uh, you'll find out the magnification is actually terrible because uh, this is not even larger than one, so you're actually making it smaller. 
uh, and also you're not setting it up for looking at infinity stuff so it's a, actually a quite interesting question that you you need to um, realize what happened when you are encountering situation that is not normal adjustment let's try the next question for this question you may find it from the uh, the hard copy of the textbook uh, you may want to use ruler and pen or pencil to draw it uh, I can guarantee you that the final image is out of this screen so pause the video now and try it okay so uh, for telescope is actually quite easy what you have to do is uh, they already give you the first image and apparently these two lines here uh, you cannot do anything with it for now because you don't know anything about them so the first thing you want to draw is draw the way that you usually do for convex lens a horizontal light going a parallel to the principal axis and then going to its F how do you determine its F is by looking at the first image because once again uh, we assumed it is um, having the normal adjustment so if this is F then it should be the same distance you don't have to draw it but I'm just trying to show you on my screen here then I just simply copy and paste this arrow so I don't have to use a ruler to measure on my screen you can find another F here which is a focal point here and and then that tells you how this light will go through uh, the point okay and for the second ray and simply it's just passing through the optical center is that is very simple and at the end since you, you should know they are diverging and you know uh, from the usual telescope diagram they will trace backward then uh, you have to just simply trace backward and as I said uh, this is going to be out of my screen so if you try to draw it um, precisely I think this is how it will look like okay it's really big all right, you have to keep tracing until like here I'm afraid your paper may not be big enough anyway so but I think the most important thing, important thing is that uh, you get the idea so it's around here you eventually will get a point of intersection and that is where your image will form okay so this is the idea okay let's try the next question pause the video now I'll recommend you to do the diagram first okay for this question uh, it will be the best if you can draw the diagram so here is a moon uh, with the diameter uh, known and then uh, this is the earth and you uh, say here and you're trying to observe the moon and when you try to observe the moon when you look at the whole moon actually it's more about uh, the light going within this triangle so the the top and the bottom of the moon basically makes uh, the diameter of the moon and if you want to calculate part one uh, that's the angle subtended by the blah 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 all these things basically is this angle theta here okay so um, the at the end of the day what you could do is uh, you could simply use this equation theta equal to 3.5 that means the diameter divided by uh, 3.8 of us of the order of magnitude um, using this formula but then you may not uh, perfectly understand why we can use this equation and that actually is from here so take a look here uh, tangent if I take this triangle because this is isosceles triangle right the two two side the green line is the same so this line and this line is the same so uh, this would be theta divided by 2 and then this is theta divided by 2 Okay, I didn't draw very well, but they are the same. So if you only look at this right angle triangle, then that gives you the tangent theta, okay, with respect to theta div uh, div half of the theta. And then you can use this length, which is 3.5 divided by 2, divided by 3.8, that one, which is the whole distance, big D. Uh, and after you use the small angle approximation, so right here, using this small angle approximation, then you can basically take away the tangent and leaving you with tangent, sorry, leaving you with theta divided by 2. And that divided by 2 and the other side divided by 2 will basically cancel out. So at the end of the day, you will be just using the whole diameter and then the dis distance separation to calculate theta. 
okay so this is the idea and then uh, if I were you I saw in past paper they just do this step directly but I would personally prefer doing it from the fundamental way uh, to do it to show that you understand uh, the process involved small angle approximation and uh, how you can actually obtain that and this is how you can get the angle for part B uh, they, they tell you the uh, both focal length for each lens so simply you apply the equation uh, that you learn in this video uh, and then you could be able to find the magnif angular magnification uh, the question in part B is asking you angular diameter so it's angular if you recall in uh, chapter 6 circular motion when we talk about angular velocity and that would be omega and for omega let me pick red color for omega that is angular velocity and that would be in the unit of radian per second for linear velocity v that would be in meter per second so right here when you see the word angular that means it's in a unit of radian also so if you somehow try to calculate how many meter you are in the wrong direction okay so the question is in itself is actually quite simple since you know it's 30 times for the angular magnification and you have the original angle you just have to times 30 and you can get the final answer let's try this question okay so uh, this question is almost the same kind of format as the one that you uh, we just talked about in the previous uh, so once again from the from the question you can have the oh, why the color is always wrong you can have the angular magnification by using the formula and then you get uh, to find out it is 4 because it's 80 and 20 cm and then uh, for the angle this time I will skip the steps I mean just now I told, told you that it would be theta divided by 2 using a tangent and at the end of the day the divide by 2 will cancel out so if you try to draw the diagram again it will be 65 divided by 2500 because it is uh, the distance of the height and also the distance between them okay so again uh, since the magnification is 4 then you times 4 and you find the answer in radian this is the last question in this video so pause the video and try it first okay so the next question would really need to uh, understand very well and it's different from the examples that we did just now so the first uh, information that they tell you is that the for this refracting telescope uh, they have the two lens separation to be 60 cm so the first thing I will put down is FO plus FE equals to 60 cm and they also tell you that the eyepiece is 3 cm so 3 cm for FE and simply from at this point uh, by doing a simultaneous equation you can already find out the FO equals to 57 cm okay of course I assume uh, this refracting telescope is working at normal adjustment right now with such configuration so looking at the object from infinity okay so now what is said is uh, the eyepiece somehow has to move backward 1.5 cm of weight so that means this side if I say this is objective lens this is uh, eyepiece moving backward away from the objective lens you should draw this diagram by 1.5 cm so that means originally 60 cm now it is 61.5 cm away from each other and it says this is because now we want to look at it for to find a clear image for something that is uh, with a finite distance away that means it is no longer uh, looking at infinity object okay so then uh, we have to readjust the telescope again so in order to obtain a clear image then we have to adjust like this and they ask you to estimate the distance that means the object where it is so uh, to clear your mind it will be very important to write down the four distance image object distance for the two lenses so the first thing that you should know is that uh, they tell you that assuming the final image is now while well, it's still forming at infinity for you to see 
So you will see, you will say that you can put down V E is infinity. U E, which means here, because you want to form the final image at infinity, then you have to put the first image, the intermediate image, at the, at this point, because this is where F E at. So three C M would needs to be. I mean, that would be the position of the first image. That means the object distance for the eyepiece. Okay, and then. If you can draw this diagram, then you can clearly know that the distance between the first lens, objective lens, to the first image here must be 61.5 minus 3. Okay, the distance here. And so that will be 58.5. And of course, the question is asking you to find uh, the UO in that case. So uh, by using Finan's formula, then you can surely find out the answer and yeah, by substituting all these things uh, inside and you will find the answer to be 2223 in cm because all these are in cm and that means 22 meter okay so i think this is actually a very good question because this question tell you uh, the mathematics in it that uh, from a normal telescope you can use when you look at the infinity object then uh, yes, the two focal length would kind of um, put together, so like like they add together will be the separation, like we talk about. Uh, but if you try to look at things that are not at infinity, in fact, think about this in real life, when you look at anything, uh, you know, literally any anything, they cannot be perfectly infinity right there must be some distance for example if you look at the moon or if you look at some other stars in the sky they actually are from different distance to your telescope so there must be a little bit of adjustment and especially when you look at things at like this distance 22 meter uh, for observing stars is actually a very short distance indeed Right, but then of course for normal eye, 22 meters is already quite long. But you can—I mean, what I mean is you can see the difference between infinity and 22 meter to a telescope, and that is you have to adjust for 1.5 cm. And the whole point I want to make is this: hopefully, can coincide and recall your memory when you try to build the telescope. Uh, you will find you will remember that when you build a telescope, there is a uh, the de design so that. Uh, you have to adjust every time if you look at like how people do like here You always have to push forward and backward All right to adjust to find the best focus and that is simply because When you look at different objects, they are not perfectly from infinity And that's why for example if you look at the mountain, you know outside uh, You have to adjust for a certain position for the two lenses so that they are in focus if you are looking at for example the moon then that will be another position but of course that position it will be a very tiny adjustment okay so that's why we do not glue that part we have to you know make it more flexible that's all for this video